Today we're going to graph the trends of the periodic table. The periodic table is arranged according to the periodic law, which as we know was published in 1871 by Dmitri Mendeleev. And the periodic law states that when elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number, their physical and chemical properties show a periodic pattern. We're going to discover that these patterns can tell us things about how the elements exist overall when looking at the periodic table and make generalized statements about the elements on the periodic table. We're going to discover that the patterns by examining the changes in properties of elements on the periodic table and the properties will be examined in this lesson are atomic radius and the first ionization energy. And to look at the trends, we are going to um, graph them. And so we're going to see what they look like in graphic form. So the elements 3 through 20, um, we're going to make a, on the first graph, there's going to be four different graphs. You should have downloaded already the graph paper that you are going to use to create the graphs. If you did not download the graph paper, you can simply use your own graph paper. You can print one off of the internet. You could download one onto your computer um, and use that, that piece of graph paper to make your graph. Um, so for elements 3 through 20, you're going to make a graph of the atomic radius as a function of the atomic number. And you're going to only do elements 3 through 20 you're going to plot the atomic number on the x-axis. Remember, x to the left and y to the sky. So the x-axis is where we're going to put, it says plot the atomic number on the x-axis. Please keep in mind that you're only doing elements 3 through 20. And every graph, though, starts at 0. So you're going to have to make a break in the graph if your first box is going to be 3. We are not doing the data for elements 1 or 2, so they're not showing up on your graph. So you're going to need to count the boxes and see what you're going to need to count by in order to get these 17 elements. Or if you have 20 boxes, you can make the boxes for elements 1 and 2 and just leave that blank because the first element you need is element number 3. So count the number of boxes, and you need to get up to number 20 on your x-axis. For your y-axis, the y-axis, of course, also starts at 0. And you're going to need to go see what is the highest data point for the atomic radius that you're going to need, because you're going to do the y-axis is your atomic radius. So this is the numbers that you're looking at. This is the atomic number, and you're only doing elements 3 through 20 on this first graph. So you're not doing elements 37, 38, 55, or 56. And you're plotting the atomic radius of those elements, 3 through 20. So you're going to have to look through your data and find out what is the highest number you need to put on your graph. Then you're going to have to divide by the number of boxes you have to find out what you're going to count by to get all of those points on your graph. So graph number one, after you create it, you are going to use a colored pencil and draw a vertical line. Vertical goes up and down. That represents the beginning of each period on the periodic table. So you're going to have to go look on the periodic table to see which element is the first element in each of the periods. And that's the element that you're going to draw a vertical line for. So after you've graphed it, you cannot do it before you have graphed it. You must make your graph first. And then you are going to draw a vertical line that represents the beginning of each period. Remember, a horizontal row on the periodic table is a period. For graph number two, you are going to make a graph of the group 1 elements only. So you're going to only do the alkali metals. 
and you're going to make a graph of the atomic radius as a function of the atomic number. And you're going to make both the graph for the group one elements and the same graph as your group two elements. That does not mean you have two separate graphs on one piece of graph paper. It means that you have to figure out all of your numbers and you're going to make two line graphs. One line graph for your group one elements and another line graph in a different color for your group two elements. So you're going to have two line graphs on the same graph, okay? Two line graphs on the same graph. Using the data, you have to go and pick, I'm not telling you which elements are alkali metals and which ones are alkaline earth metals. You have to go look on the periodic table and find that out. And then you are plotting, maybe make your alkali metal graph in red and your alkaline earth metal graph in blue or any color of your choosing. In graph number three, you are making a graph of the first ionization energy. Once again, you're only doing elements three through 20 in this graph. And you are plotting the no atomic number on the x-axis and the energy required on the y-axis. This is the data you are gonna be using. This data is available on Canvas. It's not only just in this PowerPoint, it is available on Canvas on the sheet you need to download that has the graph paper. So the two things you're graphing for this graph are your atomic number and your ionization energy. In graph number three, once again, you are going to draw a vertical line that represents the beginning of each horizontal row on the periodic table that represents the beginning of each period on the periodic table. For group four, for me for graph four, you are going to once again make one of those graphs that has two different lines on the same graph. One is going to be your group one elements and the other is going to be your group two elements and in this you are graphing the atomic number versus the ionization energy for just these two families, not all of the elements on the periodic table. This is the data you're going to be using. You have to determine which elements are in the alkali, alkali family and which ones are alkaline earth metals because it's asking you to, to draw two different graphs two different lines on your one graph, two different lines on your one graph. What I'm going to grade for the assignment is your uploaded graphs to Canvas. So you're going to upload your finished graphs to Canvas. And the answers to this Google form, which is found on Canvas as well, these are the answers to the questions that are in this Google form. Both those pieces will be graded for this assignment. Your upload of your graphs and the answer to these questions. Be sure to do both.